Hello, I'm Linda Kemp, and we're in the studio today to work on some projects together. What we'll be doing in our, in our assignments today is a watercolor demonstration along the lines of the paintings that I have with me. The two on the back, these are watercolors, and the one on this side is an acrylic. So we're going to be working on controlling the out of control. These are situations that I often see in my workshops where people struggle away with the things that are going on. In particular, we're going to be working wet into wet and building multiple layers. So if I was painting in the positive, the way that most of us usually work, I would be filling in my shape with color. But instead of doing that, because I'm working in the negative, I'm painting the space around it. So I'm just going to glide that color over. And I'm committing to memory this stroke that I'm making. And I'm going to pull the color out, wash it away. It's a really good idea to practice this before you get into a painting, especially when you're working wet into wet, so that your hand is trained to the shapes that you're making. Again, I'm washing that color away. Let's try it once more without drawing it in. But that's the basic concept of what we're after. So the stroke, load up this brush. One, two. And fill that in a little bit more. So there's my basic shape. Now, in my sample, in my photograph, they have notches cut into them. So I'm going to do that with my brush, and I'm going to cut those in now. So I'm carving away at that shape. When you're working with watercolors, you don't have to just put it on th with thin layers, drying in between. The paint does such fabulous stuff. Oh, it just spreads and it flows and it moves. So why not let it do its thing? I'm knocking a little bit of that uh, turquoise in there just because I can. Let's do a little more. If you like it in one spot, put it in another spot. If you put it down and you don't like it somewhere, put it in another spot anyways, because if at this point, if I got panicky and I grabbed a piece of tissue and I start patting at the surface, I'm going to, I'm going to disturb things and I'm not going to be happy with the marks that are left on the paper. I want this to be really wet. Look at those nice darks in here. I'm thinking about the overall movement, the structure of the plant, the stems, more color. Do you notice I haven't washed my brush out yet? Let's just put some of that rosy color in here. That nice color. Even though we've got some pretty bright lights on here in the studio, you can see how long I have to work in this wet and wet approach building up these layers because, first of all, I wet my paper so completely to begin with and put it on this non-porous surface, so it's really stewing in its own juice. Uh, and I'm using all this thick paint. I've got my little rigger brush, and I'm wetting it down. I'm going to take out some of the water, and I'm going to just tickle it, just like I am on my arm. Just tickle it across the surface of the paper, just because, as I said, it's, it's so vulnerable, just a wee brushing with this little bit of moisture on this long brush, and I should get some nice little light lines happening. Because what I'm doing is I'm forcing some back runs. Let's hope it works. You know, whenever you want it to, it doesn't. But Oh, yeah, there it comes. There we go. Put some little lines down in there, just to break that up a bit. I'm going to turn my painting as I go so that I can get into the shapes that I want and I'm comfortable handling the brush this way. You'll see I keep my finger on my paper where I need a reminder of here's where I'm going to go. So if I have a leaf here, here's a little, here's a little uh, space between the leaf. The colors that I use are guided by what color is already in the underpainting.
It's entirely up to you how many layers you like to build in your painting. Some people want to uh, leave it loose and diffused, so you may choose to only do one or two layers, and somebody else might like to be a little bit more specific about the shapes that you're making and tell more, uh, provide more information. So that person may choose to build a lot of layers. And we looked at building multiple layers and, and that's exactly what you would do. You just continue to do this. It's good to stand back from time to time, assess what's happening. Yes, I am getting a bit of a back run here. So, dry off my brush and tease this edge. Goodbye to the back run. Let's hope. Now, the colors that are down here, I've got a little bit of the rosy color. Again, just a tint. Don't need a whole lot. And I'm going to drop that in to paint around. I'm thinking about the large mass form of the berries rather than individual little berries. Let's wash this down and decide how far do I want to pull this color. I'm looking at the shape of this branch. You don't need to define it too much. There we go. We're just carving it away and then I'll wash it up. There's some rosy kind of color here. Let's pull it forward, get some of that cobalt turquoise light in. Again, I'm just sticking with the colors that were in my underpainting. I know I'm completely safe to use the five colors that I started with. I can use them absolutely anywhere in this painting and I won't get into any problems. It's when you are three quarters the way through a painting and you start searching through your palette or into your paint box thinking, well, what color am I going to use now? That's when we get into problems with color harmony. So if you stick with whatever you begin your painting with, carry that theme through the whole painting, you will absolutely guarantee yourself success as far as the color goes, no matter what colors you've chosen to use.